Hi, I'm Jake Bohall with Hive Digital. I head the search engine optimization team here. We're a full service marketing agency dedicated to helping companies uh, that we feel have social responsibility and help improve the world. Today, I'm here with SEMrush. We're going to be looking at the Organic Traffic Insights tool, which I think is one of the hidden gems uh, in the SEMrush platform. And I'm gonna show you how it works and kind of give you a few quick tips on some extra insights that you can pull back out of the tool. So let's just switch over to the screen here. Um, I've created a site here, a zero million.com. This is just kind of a, a random domain that uh, I have access for organic traffic uh, through both analytics and search console, which you will need uh, that kind of access in order to uh, allow this feature, this, this part of the tool uh, to give you all of the information uh, that you're going to want to use. So inside of the dashboard, once you've set up a project for a particular site, you'll have all of these different options. Um, one of the ones here is organic traffic insights. At the dashboard level, it'll just kind of give you a, a quick um, bit of statistics on this is how many sessions you've had, and then a, a positive or negative indicator based off of the week over week traffic metric. So if we click into this, uh, you'll, you'll get the um, full dashboard for the organic traffic insights tool. Uh, if you haven't set this up yet, um, it's going to prompt you through the setup process, which is simply signing into your uh, Google account that has access to both the analytics and search console. It's important that the account that you use to sign in uh, when verifying the app has access to both. And so you'll choose the uh, profile in, search in, or in Google Analytics, and then you'll pick the profile for Search Console, and it'll give you the option of whether you wanna pull mobile data, desktop data, or both. Uh, I typically uh, choose both because you'll notice that once you're in the platform, you have the option to segment that data anyway. Um, so I have found it's just easier to pull all of the data and then use the SEMrush platform for that type of segmentation. So one of the things that I, th I think is fascinating about this tool, um, just at the, the, the most simple level is the fact that you start getting Delta data, which is not something that you can easily see in Search Console. Um, if you're familiar with using Search Console and the search analytics feature there, you know that if you want to see, you know, keywords by page, there's like three or four different options you have to go through to filter by a particular URL and then switch back over to queries and then look at the queries. And there's no like single, um, single view that allows you to, to make more, um, judgments on how you can improve a page. So in the example here, this is zero million.com. I've pulled uh, the data and this is you know, initially pulling everything uh, from organic search. And you can see a combination of the number of keywords that Search Console is reporting uh, were queried for that particular page or where that page had impressions. And you can also see the number of keywords for which SimRush is tracking. Now, um, note in this particular case, I'm not actually leveraging the rankings tracking in the project uh, for this particular website. Um, but if you were, then obviously these numbers could be much higher. Um, this is by default what the SEMrush platform has just decided based off of popular terms that they've been able to find. So don't be alarmed if you see that the search console numbers are greater than SEMrush out of the gate because search console is going to give you, you know, more of those long tail type of keyword phrases Whereas the SEMrush default is, you know, they're basing their crawl off of more popular terms. So the, the kind of overview for me is, you know, I'll do some sorting or filtering just to get an idea of like, what is the, the highest priority page? You'll see by default, it's already sorted by the number of sessions. Um, so we can see that this particular page, the 105 business ideas, uh, is the page that currently is getting the most or the highest percentage uh, of sessions, the highest number of sessions, and so forth. Um, you can see that the Google Analytics data has been pulled directly in, so we can see you know, how many pages per session, the average duration, the bounce rate, and then if you have goals set up in analytics, you'll be able to see those numbers here, which are, are also very helpful. Um, the next step for me, you know, either I'm going to look and, and I can start kind of segmenting and say like, okay, well, if I'm looking at this from mobile, so I'm slicing you know, all of my traffic by mobile, what's the difference? And we can see that, that one, the number of sessions by mobile is significantly lower. Um, so that tells me that most of my traffic's coming from desktop and I might start to ask myself um, just at a high level, like, 
am I mobile friendly? Am I having issues with mobile? The other thing we'll notice is that this particular page, advantages and disadvantages of performance appraisals, actually performs much better uh, in terms of traffic than mobile, uh, or excuse me, than, than all compared, uh, let me back up. Um, so if we sort this particular page or filter this by mobile, you'll notice that the advantages and disadvantages of performance appraisals actually performs better than the 105 business ideas from mobile. Now, we can also see that the number of sessions that is driven by mobile traffic is significantly less than we were looking at all traffic. So we were at you know, 35 sessions for mobile, uh, 450 for all, and if we can slice that by desktop, we'll see that desktop has almost 400 sessions. So we can quickly see that you know, mobile's not performing very well for this site in comparison to desktop. And we can also see that the particular page uh, that was performing well on mobile, this advantages and disadvantages of performance appraisals, is performing um, less, it's in second place when we're looking at it on desktop. So you can start to think about whether or not individual pages uh, when you're slicing by desktop versus mobile, if they need to be optimized or updated for mobile. The other thing we can begin to do is look at individual pages. So uh, this is one of the things I like most about this tool. If I dive in and, and I'll click here into Google Search Console, so I'm pulling my data. Uh, if you click on this, it'll show you the keyword rankings by SEMrush. Uh, but I'll, I'll click into Google Search Console and we can see um, that this particular page in desktop, we can get a quick graph of how it, how it is performing. You'll notice this fun little spider hanging out down here. Um, I'm not sure why that's there. <laughs> I haven't seen that before, but it looks like it's a promotional item for SEMrush. Um, so you can see quickly for each of the queries for this particular page on desktop, you know, how it's performing, um, what the position, the clicks, the impressions, the click-through rate, uh, and then you can start doing different types of filtering. So I can say for this particular page, I want to look at things that are ranking from, you know, position, uh, let's, we'll say 10 to position one. Right, that backwards. So I can see, okay, these are the keywords that I'm ranking on the first page. Now this is helpful because if you, if you start to see keywords where you're ranking on the first page uh, and then you have a very low click-through rate, this is a good opportunity for areas that you can improve. So business plan ideas for class, business plan project ideas. You know, when people are searching for those terms, we're getting the exposure, we're ranking in positions, you know, one and two on average. It looks like it's improving here. Um, but we're not doing a good job on selling the click-through. So this is something where we can step back and say, how can we improve our meta descriptions so that we can get a better click-through rate for those particular keywords. So when you're optimizing on a page level, you can quickly identify, these are the keywords where I can make improvements. Um, and it's much easier to, uh, to do it in the SimRush platform than it is in Search Console here. And this can, you can do uh, all kinds of filtering. So if I wanted to look at, you know, best opportunities, I can look at position 10 uh, to position 13. Um, historical uh, like click-through rate data tells us that if we improve from position 11, actually we'll, we'll focus there. If we improve from position 11, 12, and 13 to positions nine and 10, which is typically you know, a low hanging fruit in SEO, we'll be able to see a two, 300% increase in our clicks. In this case, we're not getting any clicks, um, but we're right on the cusp of ranking on the first page. Now, I, I mentioned earlier that the, um, the data here was being pulled from Search Console keywords for where we're getting impressions. And then the option here, if we just click over to SimRush, um, this shows the keywords that they're um, by default tracking in the SimRush platform because they're high volume or high, high traffic terms. Um, one of the cool features here is that if you're, if you're not uh, currently tracking a keyword, um, you can easily select um, one of the keywords here or a group of keywords that you want to focus on working. Um, and maybe these aren't tracked by default in SimRush, so you can quickly select them and then click to send to position tracking. We're going to want to blur that. Uh, send to position tracking so that uh, you can then track and see what type
type of uh, impact some of your changes are having. So it's a good idea to make sure if it's not being tracked in SEMrush, uh, that you do go ahead and send it to position tracking if that's a keyword that you're trying to optimize for. Uh, as I mentioned, you can segment this by device. So um, if we're looking at particular keyword rankings on mobile uh, versus desktop, uh, versus all keywords, you can still do that same type of segmentation and get an idea uh, about how you can make different improvements. There's also this great notes feature. If you're familiar with annotations in Google Analytics, uh, then you're probably familiar with this process. However, um, you know, Google Analytics, um, you know, I personally find it's a little bit uh, cumbersome uh, to use the annotation feature and go back and try to find what's happening. Um, so we could say, for example, you know, improved uh, business ideas page descriptions. Um, and then you can make it, you know, a few notes here. And you can choose um, when you make an annotation, like which, uh, which project tool you want to kind of give some credit for that um, and check the box. And then if there's a, an external URL you want to make a note to, so uh, maybe there's a, another tool or another page in SEMrush. Uh, that, that justify that if you want to link to the specific page uh, or something in your, your uh, company's project management platform, like a task ID or something, you can do that there. So once you've made the notes, you can always go back and if you hit view all, um, you can see like the note that I just made October 26th is, is right here on top. Uh, if you need to edit it or if you want to clone the note to, to make maybe you did this across multiple pages, you, know, you can easily do that. Um, so it's quite helpful. Um, there's also an option to say whether or not the note is going to be visible um, because if you uh, toggle your notes on or off, um, you'll see, actually, let's make a note uh, going back a day just so you can see how this works. Okay. If we save that note, if we turn the notes on, you'll see that this little red icon shows up here. And then you can quickly see that a note has popped up uh, and get an idea of what's happening. So that's really helpful um, ac across the platform because when you're using SEMrush as part of your, your integrated strategy, um, this is a great way to, to make notes and be able to start to see when you, when you make a change like this, ideally you see a curve uh, similar to this that follows. Um, I had mentioned that the deltas were also something that's fantastic because unless you isolate a particular metric like click-through rate, position, or impressions um, in Search Console, you don't get any type of deltas. Um, here, you can you can easily uh, see that the deltas appear uh, right next to the change versus the prior period, um, and you can also change those time frames as well. So um, you can very easily just click over here and say, I want to look at the last 30 days. Um, and then know that you're going to then see, this is my chart over 30 days, and the deltas are going to update as well uh, based off of that change. So um, you know, I hope that the um, organic traffic insights tool, uh, you can find it helpful, and that uh, you'll be able to explore and discover some things uh, on how you can tailor this tool specifically for your business and your website and making the kinds of changes that you need to see positive improvement in your search strategies.